Zeophoria, the Living Planet, M35 to M36. The Living Planet of Zeophoria was first discovered. Nobody could have hoped to understand how much they actually failed to stop. The Living Planet of Zeophoria first became relevant in M35.999 when an exploratory fleet was attacked by a tendril of aggressive spacefaring enemies, which would later come to be known as the Tyranids, or It's a Bug's Life. Zeophoria was a jungle world in a true paradise for the Tyranids of High Fleet Tiamat. Zeophoria was overflowing with life so deadly that no imperial effort has been made to colonize any planet or celestial body in the entirety of the Tiamat systems. The Nifirs, known as the Asuriani, discovered a continent-sized living structure putting out massive amounts of psychic waves that physically crippled almost all of the Eldari in the retinue. Some theories suggest that this living planet is nothing more than a probe or a seed into our galaxy. I prefer the side of the seed, as the planet of Zeophoria emits a terribly strong shadow in the warp, and the Tyranids actually are defending this place. It is the only known place in the galaxy that is being defended. The planet of Zeophoria is also the best known example of a phenomenon commonly known as the Curse of Tyranoformin. With massive psychic resonators of flesh and other viscera scattered generously across the planet, ranging in size from Everest to continent size. My personal theory is that this is the Tyranid equivalent of a FOB or a forward operating base commonly used by modern militaries in large-scale conflicts. They set the seed here eons ago, and this could act either as a refuel station or a beacon to direct troop movements. Another idea that I've heard is the peer-to-peer -peer system frequently used in the field of computing. I'm not a real expert on this, so I'm just trying to explain it in the best of my ability. Um, this structure, or even the entire planet, could be one of the many nodes spread around the universe that the Tyranid organism uses to think or communicate amongst its galaxy-spanning tendrils. We know that um, in certain computing, they will scatter around the central processing, so that way if one core component gets hit, the entirety of the organism wouldn't be crippled. Zeophoria is also known to be the original holy site or place of reverence for a specific brand of gene stealer cultists. One great example being the Choir of the Void, and most importantly, its leader, the individual known as the Conduit, who would preach of a savior race in the stars beyond. He preached of salvation and paradise. If only they could overtake their dark masters. Soon enough, millions and millions of humans revolted and dozens of cargo hulks ascended from the surface of Heinrich's March and graciously leapt towards the stars. When these proto-gene stealers first arrived in their prophesized holy land, those individuals who first touched the flesh with the flesh, that instant became enthralled to the Tyranid hive mind organism, and they became another conduit, so to speak. As they became enthralled by the Tyranid organism, they urged their partners to spread the Creed of Tiamat, the new calling to the Tyranid hellscape of Zeophoria. High Fleet Tiamat likes to stay within its own local backyard, you could say, as it took quite some time for the Imperium to even put together the fact that the Tiamat system was an area stricken by death and every single ship who passed by was stripped of its biomass. It is also believed that the first gene stealer cults encountered and documented by the Inquisition are those who originated from the moons of Yimgarl, where pilgrims faring from Zeophoria rode in the same ships the puny Imperium of Man had sent to cleanse the Tiamat system. Now, due to the constant fusion bombing by the Imperial Navy and other Imperial elements, the Tyranids of High Fleet Tiamat have a unique coloring as well as what can be described as a hard-as-diamond carapace or exoskeleton. High Fleet Tiamat on the ground fights in dense clusters deflecting most kinetic and energy weapon fire, dancing graciously and effortlessly through the battlefield with not a concern for anything short of a melt-a-blast. It is unknown if it is due to the radiation from the constant fusion bombardments that causes the unique gray and white carapace, sometimes seen as blue or teal, or if they have been marked as the Praetorians. These Praetorians, as I like to think of them, defend their home system so fiercely that the Imperium of Man has declared quarantine extremists, 
and avoids any attempts at traversing the system or its nearby systems in any way possible. To say that the wider Inquisition failed miserably is to put it lightly, as not only did they have the Astartes of the Death Watch who physically fought the continent-sized creature, but they have records from Inquisitor Crippman, who was the single first person to discover the Tyranids. But, you know, this is the Imperium. 